the Honda NSX was actually an experiment by Honda, and its name is a testament to that. NSX stands for New Sports Car Experiment, and this experiment included having its aerodynamics modeled on the F-16 fighter jet. While regular cars of the day had sleeker cabins located over the rear two-thirds of the car, the NSX looked at the F-16 with its bubbly cockpit positioned far forwards and said, hmm, I'll have that. And its tail was elongated, which is claimed to help with directional stability at high speeds. In other words, it helps keep the car pointing straight. And we can see quite a few elements of this car in the McLaren F1 too. In this video, we'll be looking at how these features and others perform and how good they are compared to modern cars. Let's start with the front because Honda did a very nice job here actually. So the front of a normal car is one of the least aerodynamic areas. It's flat and that makes it hard for the air to flow around it. Honda really made it pointy here to reduce how much frontal area there is. That way the air can flow around the car much more easily and that reduces the drag. For a regular car, if you did that, that would be fine and you could move on. But for a supercar with a big engine, pinching the front presents another problem. Not enough cooling flow and air to the engine. The front radiator is where the car typically gets most of its cooling flow and even flow for the engine to operate. That's where the NSX's F16 inspired design comes into play. Having the cabin very far forwards means that there isn't that much room for the engine at the front. The long tail at the back means there is a lot of room for the engine back there. So naturally, the engine goes there. That still leaves the problem of how to get cooling flow and air to the engine. Yep, putting the engine at the back means you can really pinch the nose of the car, and that reduces the drag because you don't need to suck in air right there. But at the same time, you still need to suck in air somewhere. So Honda put these ducts on the side of the car. These ducts now pull in air for the engine. But placing these ducts here wasn't done willy-nilly. There was actually an aerodynamic reason for it. The flow down the sides of the car is very slow. That's because it is just the downstream of the front wheels, and those wheels churn the flow up and take away a lot of the flow's energy. If you let this air continue over the rest of the car, it means that the rear of the car now has to do with very bad flow, and that usually increases the car's wake and drag. So Honda decided to take that bad air and feed it into the engine. That leaves cleaner flow over the outside of the car, which helps reduce the wake size and hence the drag. And you don't need to have clean flow for the engine anyway. It gets decelerated and you lose most of the energy it once had. So relocating where you get most of your air from the front to the sides was a smart move by Honda. And this simulation was done with open foam. And if you want to learn open foam, then check out our courses here. We actually have an Easter sale on right now, which I think you might like. Now back to the video. Now, one more point about this duct configuration. I'm not sure if Honda meant to do it for aerodynamic purposes or for styling purposes, but the wheel arches are very minor. That may not seem like an important point, but what that does is reduce the bad flow from around the front wheels, which means that the bad flow, which you can see here as the green and blue flow, is kept to a minimum and really just enough for the air intakes to take advantage of. Now, I say that I'm not sure if this is for aerodynamics or for styling purposes because both the front and rear wheels have very sleek wheel houses. The rear wheel houses don't affect the air intakes on the sides though, but they do still affect the wake size. And we can see that there is a minimal drag from around this region. So perhaps this wheel arch design was chosen because of the multiple benefits it gave around the car. Let's now move to the front splitter because its performance is heavily linked to the front air intake. Its performance isn't that great, in fact, it's actually suffering from the same problem that many modern cars suffer from today. It's too flat underneath. So the highly curved flow has to go around that sharp edge, which it can't follow properly, and it separates here. We then get a lot of drag. I've gone through in other videos how to fix this, and one car that does it well already is the Rimac Nevera, for those interested. Now looking from on top, Honda did a really clever thing at the front edges. So as you go towards the sides of the front, the car has some pretty angled surfaces. Usually, that would increase the chances of flow separation. Having separated flow here would be really bad for so much of the car because 
then the flow over the front wheels would be worse, and that would then increase the weights down the sides of the car, and the side intakes wouldn't be able to correct for that. And then the rear of the car would then have a large weight too. But on the bottom half of the front, Honda put intakes just before these highly slanted edges. What that does is suck in some flow from around the front and reduce how much flow has to be redirected around these slanted edges. That means these edges see less flow and the flow it does see is straighter, which allows it to remain attached. So the wake is cleverly minimized here. For the top half of the front, there aren't any intakes but lights instead. Let's now move on to one of the hallmark features of this car, the F16 inspired bubble roof. This is actually something that kind of defies general rules of thumb. So when you design a car, the rear window shouldn't be slanted down that much. 25 degrees is around the upper limit. The reason why is because the greater the rear window is slanted down, the more likely the flow will separate over it. That produces low pressure on that face and that increases the drag. The NSX has quite a large angle at the rear and we're now getting into flow separation angles. But the flow still stays attached very nicely. How? It has a lot to do with just how bubbly the cabin is. Because the rear doesn't start sharply, but instead there's this sleek curve blending the roof into the rear window, and then the rear window is further curved, the flow can happily follow it. So this bubbly idea works great. And it's even more impressive considering what's behind the cabin, a rear wing. This rear wing isn't very high, so if the flow separated even a little over the rear window, the wing would have seen very bad flow, and its performance would be terrible. And one thing I really like is how the bubbly roof guides the flow around the rear window and straight into the rear wing, so it's actually feeding the rear wing with good flow. So the curvature of the cabin and rear window is crucial to this design. Without it, the NSX would lose a lot of downforce over the rear wheels and the car wouldn't be able to accelerate as fast. And actually, Honda's design just tells us how important it was to get downforce over the rear wheels. The NSX is a rear wheel drive car, and having the engine over the rear helps add weight to the rear wheels. And the way they blended the rear window into the rest of the car produces really good high pressure over the rear of the car and hence more downforce. So Honda was really trying hard to build a car that can transfer its power to the road. And they used this bubbly roof incredibly effectively. Now, the rear wing itself is interesting. It's awesome in some ways, but terrible in others. One major advantage of it is it's integrated into the car. The wing's ends blend right into the car's body. By doing that, you make it impossible for the high pressure air over the wing to rush around the edges of the wing and meet the low pressure air underneath. If that happens, you get wingtip vortices and a lot of induced drag. But because this wing is integrated into the car through the wingtips, there aren't actually any wingtips anymore, so you can't get wingtip vortices or induced drag. And this wing now falls into something called non-planar wings. So this clever mounting approach greatly reduces the drag of the wing. That's one of the major strengths of this wing. One of the major weaknesses is just how close it is to the rest of the car. As we've seen with many other cars, when you put a rear wing close to another surface, expect that the pressure from the wing bleeds onto the neighboring surface. In this case, the low pressure underneath the wing is bleeding onto the upper surface of the car and that cancels out much of the downforce the wing would have produced otherwise. A way for Honda to fix this would be to mount the wing higher. However, that would change the sleek NSX look, so perhaps Honda kept the wing low for that reason. Now to possibly the most impressive part of the NSX, it's real. It has a tiny wake, particularly for a sports car. That's for a few reasons. The first reason is because of how small the rear face of the car is. Honda really took advantage of that bubble cabin to shrink the rear of the car down. Then we have the diffuser, which by modern standards isn't very good. It's quite small and tame, but back in the 90s, this was a pretty decent diffuser, even if it did produce quite a bit of drag steel, which is partly because of all the exposed junk underneath. And to give you a comparison, this was only a decade after the Mercedes Evo 2 that we covered a while back, which had almost no diffuser. So this diffuser slants up 
and reduces the rear face's size too. Now, another reason why this rear wake is so small is because the NSX features pretty sharp rear edges. That helps reduce the wake flapping from side to side and helps stabilize the sideways force on the car over time. So with all of this, what did the drag coefficient come out to be? It's 0.33, which is about on par with the bottom supercars and maybe a little bit better. But it doesn't produce much downforce. In fact, it is producing 3.2 kilos of lift here. Peace out, amigos.